Hey guys, Dr. Cliff here at CES 2024, and I am super excited to introduce you to the Escheler Luxottica and Nuance Audio Division team here uh, at CES. And we have actually Tammy here, and we have Stefano. Thanks for having me out, guys. Yeah, thanks for being here. Well, very good. Well, Tammy, let's just start with you. Can you tell us what you actually do with the company? Yeah, so my name is Tammy Arrel, and I am a Chief of Audiology for Nuance Audio, in charge of all the audiological business. Very good. So that's the one component of it as well, yeah. which is the hearing side of it. And Stefano? Yeah, I'm the global head of the Nuance division at Tesla Luxottica. So I'm looking after almost everything here. Very good. So the unique thing about what we actually have here showcased on the table is this idea of eyeglass and hearing aids combined into one thing. So take me through kind of like where the concept of this actually came from. Because if you go like really back in history, there was a little bit of a, a precedence for this of having eyeglasses and hearing aids combined into one. So we are, let's say, uh, uh, the best manu manufacturer when it comes to frames and by the way, also lenses. We are a combination of two companies, Essilor and Luxottica. And uh, so we started thinking uh, how to include hearing solution in a complete invisible way in a pair of glasses because we know that uh, the less we have an hearing, an hearing loss, as mild to moderate is, uh, the more uh, you want to go for invisibility. So we then come out uh, with the design of this uh, fantastic pair of glasses. By the way, it's not just one style, but the different styles, different colors, different front size, uh, with an average of 43 grams. That is perfectly the average of a normal pair of glasses. Uh, and that uh, grant complete invisibility. So when you put in your face, no, no one will know about that. And so this is the, the way where uh, uh, we, will, uh, we are going to approach this, starting from the US, because it's OTC, this will help, and the other countries uh, around the world will arrive. Very good. So obviously, over-the-counter hearing aids are now a thing in the United States. And so talk to us, Tammy, about some of the hearing aspects. Like, what are we actually intending to do from the hearing side with these glasses? Okay, so the special thing about these glasses is that they have a microphone array and a specialized uh, beamforming algorithm enabling you to focus on the person you're talking to. So this is ideal for situation of speechy noise, when you go to a restaurant with friends, uh, when you... Um, when you want to hear clearly without listening effort in challenging situations. Um, another innovative thing that we have inside these glasses is that if you see, there is nothing in my ears. So the ears are completely open. Sound is transmitted to directional speakers that are located by the ears. So when you look at me, it's like a regular pair of, a pair of glasses, but it's acting out as a hearing aid. Uh, fitting for perceived mild to moderate hearing loss for the U.S. Uh, market. That's terrific. And so the kind of interesting aspect with these is that because you can add so many different microphones into uh, a bigger space than just a typical hearing aid that yeah. goes behind your ears, you actually get a better directional effect off of that. So what can we expect to see in terms of like functionality when you go out to a restaurant? That's good. You are correct indeed. It's not only the stigma uh, that we talked about, it's also the function. Because in a regular set of hearing aids, you have two microphones very in very close proximity. They are limited in their ability to pick up specially separated voices. So we come to, to answer for this uh, specifically with our beamforming algorithm. When you look at a person, you hear him better. As Stefano always likes to say, what you see is what you get. Yeah, yeah that, I love it. So um, I actually, when I was out visiting you guys in Milan a couple months ago, was wearing a prototype out there, and um, I loved it. I mean, I, to the point where like I didn't want to take them off. I know. Uh, we, were I out to, we were out to eat at dinner. Um, I was always like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I'm always experimenting, <laughs> taking them off, putting them back on, and I'm actually wearing them right now, and nobody knows that I'm actually wearing uh, glasses that also have a hearing component to it, yeah. which is really, really cool. Um, so, you know, uh, Nuance Audio, uh, what's the relationship with Nuance Audio? Because if I understand correctly, they were actually acquired by Essilor Luxottica uh, to really bring this to market. Yeah, exactly. So they had the technology, they were a super brilliant startup in Israel. So we were looking after them uh, for some years. And then uh, we thought it was the right moment uh, to, uh, to acquire them, it was last Feb. And we immediately started working together with our colleagues uh, in uh, R&D when it comes to frames, uh, lenses, hinges, etc., to produce this amazing pair of glasses. No? So 
uh, we combined, of course, their knowledge, the algorithms, and what they did in terms of direct TDP, as Tami was, uh, was uh, explaining, uh, with our ability in doing amazing classes. We are also working uh, super hard uh, in uh, um, having, you know, super nice uh, stuff around that, meaning uh, the charging pad that is here, meaning uh, the, uh, the remote control, the app. So we, uh, we know that the stigma is not typically just around uh, the object itself, but all around the traditional living solutions. Uh, and I would say around the vast majority of the OTC is not as fashion as we think it has to be. So uh, we are really working hard to, you know, to cancel any kind of stigma. The, uh, the killer word for us is invisibility, as well as uh, Tammy was saying, uh, we, we are used to simplify uh, what, what you see is what you get, because this is precisely what people with some kind of mild to moderate in loss are looking for when they are in a cocktail party or when they are in a restaurant, crowded restaurant, or in a noisy situation like this. So You know, I even find it interesting because I even like wearing these, even just around here today, there's times where I'm not even in a noisy place, but I just like the additional enhancement of the sound. Uh, Tammy, you were walking in front of me as we were walking yeah. by, and you were talking and saying something, and when I took them off, I'm like, I can't understand what she's saying. I put them back on, I can hear them, and I'm thinking of situations where like people are walking in a grocery store behind their spouse, and their spouse is talking, and like, what kind of milk do you want, or whatever, and you would actually be able to enhance your hearing at that time, too. So I see the use cases of these being different for different people. I yeah. mean, uh, even, and, and even the normal hearing side, I don't think that it, I don't think that you necessarily have to have a mild to moderate hearing loss that falls into the over-the-counter hearing aid category to use these. You, should, you could use these at any time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We just enjoy it because it's really, it reduces our listening effort. Okay. When you're in a restaurant, it used to be like this when it's noisy. Mm -hmm. And now I feel that when I use the glasses, I can relax, I can lean back, I can enjoy the food. Yep, absolutely. Uh, even here in, our, in one of our uh, booths, um, all the customers that are going around or, uh, I mean, in general, the people that are here uh, are testing the, uh, the solution and they are saying, come on, it works even though I'm no I, I think I'm normal hearing because they are helping me in having less uh, hearing stress. So in, uh, one of, in, in this booth, we are, we are you know, um, uh, giving uh, this, uh, this sense of uh, distress that people are really appreciating. Even the younger one, eh? we had uh, a couple of YouTubers yesterday, they were like uh, in their 20s and they said, come on, I want it. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I mean, let's talk about the vision side of it too, because we're not just talking audio, um, we're actually talking vision. So uh, individuals who are out there who have, you know, uh, different uh, levels of vision loss, like how is that uh, taken care of as well with this product? Yeah. So any kind of uh, lenses uh, uh, are, we, we can also any kind of lenses here, no? So even though you, uh, you don't have any, any kind of vision uh, issues, so you will then go with transparent lenses, sun lenses, but then any kind of uh, vision, uh, any, any kind of power that you need. So we work very hard with our R&D also when it comes to lenses, because you know, for certain powers, uh, you need bigger lenses. So it's not easy to, to, uh, to mount them here. But uh, now, thanks to our R&D, thanks to what we did uh, also again with another Israeli company that, uh, that is part of our family, that, uh, that is Shamir in Israel, we did a great job and we tried to mount any kind of, let's say, extreme lenses and it works perfectly. Excellent. So can you actually walk me through some of the product line here that you have for, I imagine these will be uh, your first versions that eventually end up getting released, yeah, correct? Yeah, So there is the um, square one, we call it, uh, in two sizes. So 54 and 56, that is the size of the front. And then we have the round one, as Tommy has, and let me check, I have this one, I'm, I'm changing. So this is the round? <laughs> Many times per We've been wearing them all. <laughs> so this one uh, are the, the rounded one, and uh, the size of this is 48. And those are more for, uh, you know, s small uh, faces, for family one, uh, that, that color that Tommy is, is, uh, is now uh, having is the, the most good for female, even though it's good also for uh, for many males so we will have a uh, uh, six uh, a combination of six different models at launch but this range uh, will uh, will uh, will grow and uh, right after the launch 
Very good. Now, I have a very direct connection with consumers who are very interested in this type of technology. So I'm going to be asking you guys a few questions about it. Um, one question that we get a lot is, what is the battery life of something like this going to be? Because from what I can tell, uh, the batteries can't be that big in here because these are super slim and sleek frames. Yeah. yeah. So at the moment, uh, uh, we reached the eight hours uh, battery life, um, even though, of course, it depends by the uh, noise of the, on the, uh, of the environment where you are. So the less noise it is, uh, the more you can grow up to 10, 12 or whatever. In any case, uh, we are eight months to go for the launch. Uh, so we, we aim to increase this in two ways, with better batteries, but even more uh, with uh, less energy expensive uh, algorithms. So uh, this is what we aim to reach. Yeah, I just know that, you know, inside of the hearing aid world, the more uh, enhancement of the audio that you're doing, so to speak, the more it chews down on that battery life. Yeah. yeah. And in any case, a, a recent study that came out in Europe is saying that on average, a uh, customer of the traditional hearing solution uh, industry is using uh, his uh, pair of uh, hearing aids uh, for eight and a half hours per day. So we also say that uh, if you take off the glasses, they are they goes immediately in standby to preserve the battery. Then uh, to do so, you can also continuously with your glasses because maybe you need power lenses and switch off them uh, through the bottom here or uh, through the app uh, or uh, through the uh, um, smartwatch or even uh, through the remote control. So there are different ways to preserve batteries. Uh, and in any case, if you, as I said, if you stay in a super quiet environment, the system will slow down power because it will recognize uh, that six mics, uh, six mics are not needed. So, we, and we are improving every, every day performances. That's excellent. And so you actually brought up kind of the next question, which is what kind of interaction would this actually have with a smartphone? And you even brought up the Apple Watch as well. Yeah, so currently we have an app uh, that you can control the volume. You can control all kinds of settings, like uh, controlling how much you want to hear your own voice. Uh, how much you want the noise reduction to be to act um, in the first prototype in the first product so it's going to be an over-the-counter hearing aid we got we're going to go with a preset so that means we have a few uh, several pre-configuration of hearing losses that you can choose from and then you can choose the one that best fitting your hearing uh, condition that's excellent and then uh, also with the watch integration you essentially wouldn't even have to take your phone out of your pocket you could make some degree of adjustment directly from your wrist if you wanted to yeah. which is in a super discreet and invisible way excellent and which uh, for a lot of people the whole reason they're going to go this route is because of the discretion of it that no one will yeah. know that they're essentially wearing hearing aids at the same time as their eyeglasses exactly yeah um so another question we get is like where are you actually going to be able to find this like is it a optometry product is it a hearing product that you would get from an audiologist like where are you actually going to be able to go and get these devices yeah so at launch we aim uh, to uh, to have a product a nice product uh, that will help you we are used to say with some superpower when it comes to hearing so we don't, we don't want to have uh, any any you know medical claim about uh, hearing aids etc because we know that people are skeptical and they, they don't want to talk uh, the vast majority of them don't want to talk about their hearing problems it's not a nice topic let me say no so we want to approach the other way around in the meantime uh, we are uh, thinking about uh, a pro version uh, that will uh, uh, give the audiologist the possibility to do let's say most serious things for let's say severe hearing loss for example this will come in, in the months or years uh, now we are super focused on, on that's this awesome product. Uh, but you know we strongly believe that uh, that kind of customer that will buy this in the lens crafter will never approach in these very years for example in, in his 50 uh, an audiologist because of the stigma so uh, because they know that the only way if i if i cross the door the audiologist will will then propose me a traditional hearing aid that could be behind the ear, inside the ear, but then it's not invisible and then it's not comfortable. So we are really having deep discussions with many of those guys in their 50s that are saying, you know, I will really buy this tomorrow, but I will never cross the door since I will be in my 70s. Yeah, know? yeah. Um, so. Well, I think it's interesting is that the, the idea of once people start using a product like this, and they don't want to give it up. And if their hearing ends up getting worse, they just, they're not going to want to give up the enhancement of the sound yeah. from that perspective. It's like a stepping stone towards exactly. hearing. Uh, I want to add to what Stefano was saying that about like from an audiological point of view, 
you have seen many patients coming to your clinic most of them when they are when they have mild hearing loss the chances are low that they were going to go out from the clinic with a hearing aid because people usually do not identify themselves as having hearing hearing issues that that severe or that profound to have uh, that significant uh, to use hearing aid and here it's like this, the perfect combination between a situational solution okay it can help me help me exactly in the places where it's more difficult so final question for you and this is a question that i got posed on one of uh, the pieces that i did about this several months ago uh -huh. which is what do we suspect the potential cost of this would be considering that it's two actual things it's vision correction and hearing addressing the hearing yeah so um the data that uh, you can find also in the fda website or in the senator warren website are saying that on average uh, an american to buy a couple of the hearing solution is spending forty six hundred dollars <laughs> So uh, we aim uh, to stay in the range of one fourth of this. So let's say, uh, I don't want to say 1200, uh, 1100, 1000, because we are not clear which will be precise at the price point, but it will be in that range. Guys, thank you so much for taking time with me here today. I'm sure the viewers thank will you. enjoy it on the channel. I, I also presume this won't be the last time that we have conversations about this product because we can <laughs> expect this to hit, I'm guessing, towards the tail end of 2024, correct? Exactly. In the United Please. States? Yeah, it is. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome, guys. Thank you. Bye. Nice thank to see you again. Lot. We'll see you next time, guys. Bye. If you enjoyed this, make sure that you hit that like button. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel and you want to catch more of these videos, hit that subscribe button with notification bell and we'll see you next time.